Uh, Janine is uh, going to do the rest of the presentation here. She's from CDM Smith and, as I said, a major editor of this handbook. Um, and uh, with that, I'm going to ask uh, Janine that um, she take away my keyboard and mouse control so she can take over completely and I can sit back. All right, I've done that. Hello everyone, my name is Jeanine Fear, and today what I'm going to do is walk you through the Chapter 3 of the Translation Site Impact Handbook. And I'm also, while going over this chapter, going to go over all the le legislative changes that occurred this summer that basically impact certain portions of this handbook as well. Chapter 3 with over several topics in regards to growth management and transportation planning, as you can see on the slide before you. What we'll cover today is several sections that are found within Chapter 3, and they'll be appearing on screen as I talk. Basically, Chapter 3 goes over comprehensive plans and comprehensive plan reviews. It will also go over the statutory requirements for which impact not only the elements but how comprehensive plan amendments are developed and looked over. And we'll also look at different types of comprehensive plan amendments that you'll see as well as concurrency alternatives. So chapter three is set up to first provide guidance. Chapter 3 is the first set up to provide guidance regarding conference plan amendments and alter concurrency alternatives. Each section within Chapter 3 provides a brief introduction of those concepts for a specific topic, and then it gives um, more additional detail to help reviewers as well as interested parties to understand different topics like sector plans, um, rural land stewardship area, things like that. Within each section of Chapter 3, you're going to find several hyperlinks that Gary was talking about. Those hyperlinks are there for you to help as an additional learning aid, just in case you have additional specific questions regarding certain topics. Now, at the end of Chapter 3, you're going to notice that there are several resource guides. These resource guides are available to you as additional aids as well for, to help you understand certain topics. In regards to legal authority, for example, what is the legal authority to look over future land use map amendments? What is the legal authority to look at concurrent transportation, concurrent things like that? Resource so guides also talk about different online resources available through DOT and DEO regarding a plan and review. And finally, we have a checklist to go over what's called future land use map amendments. Now, what you see before you is an example of the checklist for the Federal Land Use Map Amendment Resource Guide. I'm just showing you this as an example of what type of things you'll find at the back end of this chapter. You can see on the slide for the checklist, it first talks about whether you look at whether the amendment correctly identifies the study area as well as what type of impact this amendment might have. We will assess further in the, in the presentation regarding future land use map amendments, what they are, and what element they impact. We're going to tackle the first section of the handbook underneath Chapter 3, which is a general introduction into comprehensive plans and plan amendments. Now, you might want to know what a comprehensive plan is. Comprehensive plans are framework documents which provide goals, objectives, and policies which reflect the vision of a local government. Each local government within the state of Florida is required to have a comprehensive plan. I'm with Florida DOT. We were doing lots of, of training on uh, growth management and had gotten out there, created 
uh, lots of good guidance, lots of good training, and then 2011 came. Um, and uh, there was a series, uh, this is when the, the land, planning agency, land planning agency was still called uh, the Department of Community Affairs, uh, but they came around the state and did a lot of uh, um, teaching sessions. And, uh, and I, most of you, I, I understand that in 2011, um, what, we've, what we did is we stepped back from uh, as much control as we had over lo we, DOT, over local governments and the uh, concurrency issues and um, that we were told to refocus on the uh, important state resources. Now, I'm going to let Janine come back in and I uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Gary, and I apologize for being a little absent right there. All right, so uh, before technology attacked me, I was just briefly going over what a comprehensive plan was, and I noticed when I came back in, Gary was giving all of you a little bit of a brief history of what has occurred around 2011. But, and just what happened was, prior to 2011, we had what was called the Growth Management Act. After 2011, we saw massive changes to this Growth Management Act, and it was named the Florida's Community Planning Act. Part of the changes to this act was the restructuring of the state agency's role in regards to growth management, in particular for us, transportation planning. So let's get back to comprehensive plan. So I was just briefly saying what has happened with 2011. Um, in regards to what comprehensive plans do, they give a vision for a local government, usually between 10 to 20 years. Now, some comprehensive plans can have multiple planning time frames. And that could depend on various pieces of their of the elements within the plan having different planning horizons. Like for example, sector plans, which we will talk about later in this presentation, usually have different planning time horizons than the actual comprehensive plan they're adopted into. So I'm going to have planning horizons for 50 years or two, I remember off the top of my head, I actually have planning horizons for 100 years. So these are documents that are generally trying to understand what the community wants and what the community sees itself into the future. In general, there is a bare minimum of eight major elements for inland counties in their conference of plans and nine um, major elements for coastal counties. And that's because there's an extra element called coastal management element required for counties that are along the coast. All elements within a comprehensive plan are required by state law to be internally consistent with each other, as well as consistent with specific statutes identified in the handbook under Chapter 163, Part 2 for the statute. Now, of the major elements that I was just generally talking about, we're going to hit upon three throughout this entire presentation. That is the future land use element, the transportation element, and the capital improvement element. Now, as Gary was alluding to earlier, Prior to 2011, the State Land Planning Agency, which was the Ministry of Growth Management for the state, was known as the Department of Community Affairs. After 2011, the Department of Community Affairs became part of what is now the Department of Economic Opportunity. So when I refer to State Land Planning Agency, that's the Department of Economic Opportunity. They are now the ones that manage their growth management for the state of Florida. So for the rest of this presentation, in terms of the state land planning agency, I'm going to refer to them as DEO. Now, DEO is not the only state agency that is involved with growth management. There are others such as FDOT that's also involved. And FDOT is involved from the transportation planning side of it. 
under Section 163.3184, Florida Statutes, it defines all of those agencies, such as FDOT, that would be coordinating with DEO in terms of comprehensive planning. FDOT has a published procedure, procedure number 525-010-101-C, that covers the review of comprehensive plans for SDOT staff. Now, this procedure identifies areas of focus for DOT conference plan reviewers, as well as identifies, identifies coordination and submission uh, procedures for DOT reviewers in regards to working with DEO on conference plan amendments. Currently, this procedure is going through revisions to update it to the current growth management legislative changes that are going through right now. Well, that have been adopted 